Hi, good morning. Welcome to Lurvie's at another quick take video recording. Today we're here to talk to you about seed starting and planning for your vegetable garden. I'm Tracy Bordis, seasonal color manager at Lurvie's. I work in the displays location. So seed starting, there's some components of planning for seed starting that are very important. One of the beautiful things about starting seeds and not using a plant that's already been started by a grower is that you have a really big selection of what you can grow. There are so many different seeds that you can find in the store out there. For today's purpose, I'm gonna kind of focus in on peppers and tomatoes. So for seed starting, a bit of the planning that you'll need to do is think about first what you'd like to grow in the garden and then make a few selections of the seeds that you would like to grow and look at the information that's provided on the seed packet. It's gonna help you to make your planning choices of when to plant. Most of the seed packets on the back of the, I should say most, all of the seed packets have the information on the back that give you the information that tells you when to start seeds indoors. For instance, on peppers, this one is telling you to start your seeds eight to 10 weeks before you're gonna transplant them out into the garden. Eight to 10 weeks before our frost date, right? Our frost date in the Chicago land area is give or take about May 15th. So eight to 10 weeks from that frost date, you're gonna work backwards on the calendar and that's gonna tell you approximately when to start planting your seeds. If you do it too soon, you'll have tall, leggy, weak plants that have spent too much time indoors before you can get them out into the garden, which is really where they want to be. So um, about the end of March, you would start these pepper seeds. So all there's so many different types of seeds you can choose from. Here's some different varieties of tomatoes. And like I said, on the back has all of that information for when to start plants indoors. Some plants don't, would prefer just to be direct sown, and that information is on there. So if it says this seed prefers to be direct sown, that means you want to plant it right in the garden. Some uh, seeds, plants that like to be planted direct in the garden are, for instance, squash plants. They don't like to be transplanted and handled, so it's better to just direct plant those right into the garden. And it'll tell you when to do that. That generally talks about our frost date as well. So I've done some preparation here to kind of talk to you about how to get your seeds started indoors. Let's take a look at that. So you need a good seed starting soil. That's important. Seed starting soil is a little lighter than your typical potting soil and sterilized. Sterilized soil is very important for seed starting. You don't want to use soil that you've saved from other plantings. Start with a good, fresh, sterilized batch. Um, reason being is you can get uh, different uh, diseases that can hinder your uh, seedlings. They're very vulnerable when they're in that small stage. So start, start with a sterilized soil. I also have a couple of other components that we'll talk through. You need a nice labeling system. You're gonna wanna label all of your plants um, when you get them planted. Um, here I got a couple of different things that I, I like to use for showing um, how many seeds when you go to plant them. It makes it a little easier. You have, uh, you're always going to use a waterproof tray and then something that sits down in it. These are your little seed cells that you're going to fill with soil. And a lot of them come also with a tray that sits on top. And that's important for seed starting because it keeps the moisture in and gives you nice, um, even soil moisture contact for germination. These come in a lot of different sizes. These have a little bit of a larger hole. These have 36 components. This has 36 components. These are just larger uh, soil hole up, um, sections. And then there's also ones that are just waterproof trays. If you want to not start with this system and use um, like peat containers or even make your own, for instance, this product, you can make the containers right out of recycled newspaper. So by using these different products, you're just going to fill them with soil. It's going to be uh, similar to what you would do here. I just wanted to show you those. 
One of the other components that you can use for this is once these get um, uh, starts growing, you can use them to transplant them into something that's a little bit larger like this before you get them out into your garden. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll show you from start to finish how to do this process. So what I've done um, is I've poured a little bit of the soil down into a waterproof container. See, this is a little bit drier when it comes out of the bag. I like to always for seed starting pre-moisten my soil. The reason being is, is that it, it helps when you're putting it into the containers and I'll show you that when I get to going. So you're just gonna add some soil. You're gonna keep um, stirring this around. Add some soil, add some water. You're gonna keep stirring it around until you get a nice consistency that kind of pat is easy to pack together, but water doesn't drip out of it when you're squeezing it, it's right? It kind of holds together, a little bit different than when you saw that to start with. At that point, then you take your, your seed starting um, trays and you're gonna fill those up. Start with just adding the soil in. And this part to me is very important. Once you get them like that, you could go and put them in and get your seeds in, but I always give it that extra little pack right there because that will give you a nice strong root system once those seeds germinate. Then I top it off one more time. Make sure you can see your little cells so that you know where your seeds have to go. Don't, don't pack it too densely. It just needs a nice good um, uh, soil base for that root to grow into. Not too loose, not too dense. So then you would, you would fill all of your containers, get all your containers ready, have all your containers ready, ready for planting. And then another really important component on the back of the seed packet is it's going to tell you the depth for planting. That's very important when you're starting your seeds. So um, for instance, this says planting depth a quarter of an inch. What I like to do to show me that is I take a ruler, I set it up here at the zero point, and I mark the quarter of an inch. So here is, that's a quarter of an inch. That's not very deep, not very deep at all. Some of them are, go as, as deep as a half inch, but that's not much at all. So really then I just take that, I make a small divot in my soil, I do all of them at one time. Do all your stages together at one time. And then, now you're ready for planting your seeds. I like little things like this instead of just trying to pour them direct right out of your package because it lets me see what I'm doing. I can see the seeds. I can see how many I have there. I'm not gonna plant too many. I'm not gonna plant too few. I like to put two seeds in every hole. Gives me some insurance. That way if one doesn't germinate, you have a second one. If they both germinate, you're just gonna pinch one of those off carefully without disturbing the one that's left. So you would take your two seeds, drop them down into the hole, and I go through and I do each one. I get them all planted and then I come back and I just lightly press a little soil over it all at the same time. Then I use a small spray bottle to water. If you try to use a water can for this, it disturbs the soil too much. So a small spray bottle, I moisten them. Remember, we pre-moistened. We don't want them to be socky, sobby, soaking wet. We want them to just be nice and moist. You're gonna moisten that. You have all your trays done. Then you're gonna take your labels that you made with the same name as your seeds on it and make sure that you label those and get those you don't wanna forget. Now, this is a little bit tall. I'd probably have to cut that off a little bit because this needs to fit right over it. This, you want this to fit right over it so that it keeps the moisture in. You may get some moisture that builds up inside there. You can simply just tap it down check it every day or so make sure it hasn't dried out if it's getting a little dry on the top just use your spray bottle again and moisten it so those are some of the really important components make sure that you're labeling look at all the information on your seed packets i want to talk to you about one other thing that can be kind of important 
Seeds typically like to germinate at about 70 degrees is the perfect temperature for them. So if you're doing your seeds in a heated room in the house, um, a kitchen or a room that's typically stays pretty consistent in temperature, um, it might take a little bit longer for your days to germination, which is also listed on the back of your seed packet. So watch that. It, it, it's fun to watch and then see them, them germinate. It may take a little bit longer if you're just doing them without a heat pad, but if you use a heat mat, a seed heat mat, at a consistent 70 degrees, it'll be pretty true to germination days. And the other um, reason you would want to use that is if you're doing it in like a spare room, maybe an, an extra bedroom or down in the basement that might be a little bit cooler, a room that's a little bit cooler than a normal 70 degree temperature, this will give you some added insurance that you don't start to rot your seeds before they germinate. So that's kind of important. So we've talked about all the different components of getting your seeds started and then your days to germination, which it tells you on the back of the package. Once that happens, you need to start to introduce light to the plant. At this point, there's no purpose to introduce light to the plant other than normal light in the room. But after they germinate, it's important for them to get good light. So we're gonna talk, I'm gonna talk a little bit about that. I'm gonna show you some of the products that are really good for helping you keep nice, strong plants. Hi, so now, like I said, we're gonna talk about the stage of adding light. Once your seeds have germinated and you see the plant comes up above the soil, that's when the plant now really needs a good amount of light. If you're just putting your seedlings on a windowsill, south facing is best. Make sure that you're rotating them. Remember, they're gonna start to move towards where the light is the best. One of the nice things about having grow lights for your plants is that you can control it. You have a little bit more control over it, right? So there's a, a lot of different setups that you can choose from. I'm gonna show you a couple of here that we like. This is a, a component where it's a stand. You buy the light separate. The stand holds this, it has the components down below. This is a setup where it's all together. You have your tray in the bottom, you have the light that is on the stand that's adjustable. And being adjustable is extremely important when you're starting seeds. So when the plant germinates, you want the seed right down really close to it, not touching it, but very close to it. And as that plant begins to grow, you continue to move the light up, move the light up as the plant, you just keep moving the light up with the plant. And that'll give you a nice sturdy, stocky plant. If the light is too high, the plant wants to reach up to it and it starts to stretch and get a little bit leggy. So that's very important. Another thing that's important with grow lights is that you need to use a cool light that's designed for growing seedlings. If you use um, other lights like shop lights or they're, they, they're heat generating, you can't use a heat generating light for your seedlings, you'll burn them. So this is, very, this is one of the very important steps of growing seeds indoors, is being able to introduce the light once they've germinated. So there's a couple of uh, the steps that'll help you to plan your vegetable garden and getting started with starting your plants by seeds. There's nothing more rewarding than seeing it from start to finish, to see the seeds, to grow the plant yourself, get it in the garden, and then harvest the fruit, the whole circ full circle is absolutely satisfying. Give it a try, it's pretty simple. Thanks for joining us, and I hope you enjoyed the information. Remember, we're here to help. If you have any questions, join us, give us a call, check out our website, and don't forget to follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. And thanks again for joining us. Have a great day.